Hello everyone. I am going to share with you a little story about my own self-abandonment and how it happened. <laughs> a little story about that. Um, so, you know, as a child, I was raised in a uh, fundamentalist Bible cult. <laughs> and that's a big, long story. But essentially, what what I now understand happened is that I learned from... Now, don't get me wrong, my parents are wonderful people and I love them and they have given me a lot of love. But in their experience um, of joining this cult when they were young, uh, they were teenagers, they just were entering their 20s and this was a time in, you know, the 60s and 70s when the revolutionary spirit was really charged up and especially for that generation um they you know they were they were really branching out and looking for more and seeking and uh for my parents in particular they were um each looking for something different for different reasons and they got sucked into this group because they were both very uh vulnerable and looking for answers and this particular group that um they became members of that we were in my and I was born into this group until I was uh 12 years old almost 13 well yeah 12 years old um yeah this this experience for them was about basically giving over their power and uh what I learned from them for, as a young child was um, all subconscious. This was not consciously taught to me, but it was shown to me by their behaviors. And this is how children learn, right? We Children learn through the behavior of the adults around us, right? So we watch what they do, and that shows us how to be too. <laughs> it's pretty simple. But what happens is over time that perpetuates uh, patterns, right? And in my case, the pattern was set in motion to basically abandon my own personal desires, my own internal uh, sense of self um, in order to please others, in order to be liked, in order to be loved by others, in order to be accepted into the ways that this group expected us to be and act and live. And, you know, that's powerful. And you don't have to be a member of a, of a cult to, um, to have that happen, you know, to perpetuate the pa pattern of self-abandonment. All you need is a situation where you grow up in a framework that does not show you how to trust yourself, uh, that does not show you how that your personal individual desires matter. So it's a balance. You know, we we can't just be so selfish that only our personal desires matter, but we also can't be so uh, self-denying that all that matters is uh, the collective group that we're part of and what they say goes and we have to give our own, give up on our own truth in order to match our truth with that truth, with the truth that they say is the truth. Um. So in my case, you know, when we left this group at when I was 12 years old, um, we, it, that began my journey really of, at first it was, it was basically, I was just really angry, angry at my parents, angry at what I didn't know, what God, God, whatever that was, uh, angry that I was told that all of this was truth, but now suddenly I'm not supposed to believe any of that anymore. So that was really hard. And I think that 
in a lot of ways, many people go through that just when they enter adulthood or when they enter, you know, adolescence, different phases of life, or when, uh, when they enter their 30s or 40s or 50s, <laughs> you know, when they start to wake up to the reality that their personal creative force and their personal internal sense of being and their own inner desires for their life and their their true authentic self their playful joyful uh self that when they start to wake up to that part of themselves and that that part starts to wake up and say but what about me <laughs> what about me you left me behind what about me why don't i get to play why don't i get to enjoy life what how come i had to live my life according to all these rules and regulations that were imposed on me that make no sense now that i realize now none of that makes any sense so what makes sense and then and then maybe what happens is a lot of pain so what you know and and as i'm sharing this story i just want to share with you that i'm sharing this with you because I think that so many people feel all alone in 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 that moment and they don't even know that they can ask for help. So many people don't know what they're asking help for and they feel stupid or selfish or like oh, I'm just making a big deal out of this so I should just get on with it and 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 just be grateful for what I have and, and, and put that part of myself off to the side and just get on with it, you know, and, and find out what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and I want to say that you're not alone and that there are ways to reconnect with that part of you and to, to give that part of you what it needs. And it all starts with self-compassion. I know that sounds like an idea out there. What is self-compassion? How does that lead to personal happiness? And, and how does that fit into making the world a better place? <laughs> you know, how can I be a, a, con, a contribution to others if all I'm doing is worrying about self-compassion. And I'm going to be talking more about this because this is the core of my work. This is the core of what we're here to do in this lifetime is to use the power of compassion to heal ourselves, our relationships with each other, and create a better world we know is possible. So you're not alone. There is a way and it starts with self-compassion. It starts with honoring your needs in this moment. And we use self-compassion to heal those wounds. And we use it through many, many ways, using mindfulness, using witnessing, acknowledging, using body-mind practices, somatic processing methods, using inner child work, using trauma-informed care to unearth the intergenerational patterns that have been perpetuated. We call shadow work, where you go into uh, looking at all the things you've been afraid of or looking at all the parts that you don't like, the parts of yourself that you, you have put aside uh, or um, the parts of you that were shamed. Um, so <sighs> I feel really passionate about this because this, if I didn't learn about this work and, and did not do this work for myself, I wouldn't have been able to, cre to create the life that I'm living today and be able to help others and be a beneficial contribution rather than a destructive contribution 
because for many years I was living a very self-destructive life because I was carrying out those unconscious patterns that have been perpetuated of self-abandonment because essentially I had been emotionally abandoned and on an unconscious, this was not consciously done by people in my life, but there was abandonment that had occurred in my youth and that led to my own self-abandonment that that I had to then heal. <laughs> and so essentially it's the wound of self -com self abandonment that we are healing with self-compassion. And even if you you might say, well, my trauma wasn't such a big deal. You know, you 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 kind of uh, you minimize, you minimize it because, well, other people have it worse than me. So I should just suck it up and be okay with feeling less than or feeling like my needs don't matter. But that, my friends, is the worst thing you could do for, for anyone, for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones, for your friends, and for your life. So I encourage you to learn about what self-compassion has to offer uh, for your own life and for the betterment of your own relationships and just to be happy. Why not be happy? Why not? <laughs> you know, why not actually seek happiness? I think we have a stigma in our culture that says we're not allowed to seek happiness and that is a shame. That's, that's really a crying shame. So I'm here to tell you that you deserve it. And we all do. And we can help each other do it too. So for, for those of us that are on this healing path of wholeness and are here to be creators and creatives and teachers and facilitators and... Um, just people who are interested in cultivating more peace and love in the world. This is where it's at. And so in service to that, my work is going into this beautiful direction of an online course called The Art of Self-Compassion. And I want you to join me if you can. I have 10 more spots available. Um, there's 15 total and there's five people signed up already. It starts on April 20. First, I'll be talking more and more about this, and um, I look forward to sharing more. Let me know if you have any questions. You can go to my website, rachelchase.com, and register for the course. There are three affordable options for payment. This is um, a culmination of so much of my work that I've been doing on myself and the work I've been doing with others as a coach and therapist through these years. So I appreciate you. I'll be, I'll be available anytime you want to send me an email and talk about self-compassion. I'm all ears and listening. I'm here to support um, the awakening of self-compassion self and unconditional love in the world and in your heart and in my heart for all of us. So reach out anytime, go to rachelchase.com and find out all about my new course now. Cheers. Take care.